We are here at the Acton Library, Acton, Massachusetts. And many of your local libraries are in themselves history museums. And here it is a wing uh, dealing with Acton and the Civil War and Revolutionary War. And um, let me just read the plaque here. The Davis Guards are born. Local militias continue to exist in Massachusetts after the Revolution. Men between 18 and 45 were required to join. They drilled regularly, chose offices, and kept themselves in a state of readiness. Now, um, there is a movement that's uh, advocating that we reinstate the militias, um, led by the Committees of Safety, Dan McGonagall, and, and others. Um, and this is a, a good example of why perhaps we should. Anyway, getting back to reading the plaque, the young country once again resisted England in the War of 1812. This time, Acton's militia called itself the Davis Blues in honor of Isaac Davis. They marched in defense of Boston. And uh, as an aside here, there were local militias around the coast of New England actually prevented uh, a lot of um, for, for, for the British from doing a lot of damage. Uh, back to the plaque. In 1835, the Davis Blues became part of the Massachusetts Militia Regular Light Infantry. In 1840, the company was absorbed into the 4th Regiment and ceased to exist as a distinct unit. On April 19, 1851, a volunteer militia company was organized in Acton as ordered by the governor. This group chose to be known as the Davis Guards. In 1855, it became Company E of the 6th Regiment of Massachusetts Volunteer Militia. MVM. The Davis Guards existed as a company throughout the Civil War. The headquarters remained in Acton until December 1873 when it moved to Marlboro. Of course, by the early 1900s, the militia was absorbed by the National Guard and the mission was uh, greatly uh, changed. So I would recommend uh, not just visiting local libraries, but this particular one, which is right off of Route 2 right next to Concord and a very lot of interesting here local militias prepare the tension between free and slave states with talk of secession had grown very strong by 1860 in January 1861 Massachusetts Governor John Andrew ordered that all volunteer militia companies be fully ready to answer any call from the president so um, here we see uh, the departure of the Davis Guards, again, this was a volunteer militia. They were drilled, they, trained, they were well trained, and uh, they were able to answer the nation's call. You know. And of course, here's a bust of the great George Washington. What history museum is not complete without that? I think George Washington would have advocated that we keep the state militias. I don't think he would have been too happy about uh, the Civil War, however, or what became known as the Civil War. But anyway, here's uh, again some wonderful things to visit. Powder horns. This um, this actually here was uh, from the Revolutionary War, War of Independence. Sword carried by Captain Isaac Davis. This was the actual sword. Here, the Captain Davis carried uh, in Lexington at the Battle of Concord, Lexington, in Concord, where he where he died. He was one of the first to die in the defense. Here, there's shoe buckles, and there's a powder horn owned by another uh, Acton Minuteman that was killed at the Battle of Concord, in Lexington. And we take a little walk through the library here, or through the uh, Civil War museum aspect of the library and you see a lot of artifacts and the old Massachusetts 6th Regiment 26 Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry there's some more here's a more uh, here's a more recent artifacts from the Civil War here yeah, you notice how the weapons have changed a lot. G-A-R stands for Grand Army of the Republic. Funny how they use the term Republic. Here's a Springfield, 1864 Springfield rifle. Percussion cap, you notice it still had a, still was a, uh, was not a breech loading, it was still a, uh, it was a musket. 
it may have been rifled, but you still had to put the use the ramrod. Here are some more weapons, bayonets, epaulets, swords, Medal of Honor awarded to Private Nathaniel Allen, 1st Massachusetts Regiment, for rescuing the National and Regimental Colors while under heavy enemy fire during the Battle of Gettysburg. The medal was obtained for this display with the help of Congressman Martin Meehan. You know, probably the only good thing he's ever done in his congressional career. What brought me into Acton today was to leave information off about the Acton's membership in the International Council on Local Environmental Initiative, which uh, is an international organization. And it's uh, seemed very interesting that here's a town with its wonderful history, people who fought for freedom, answered the alarm, and now their descendants are gladly turning the town over to a international entity totally uh, against the Constitution. Nevertheless, there's still plenty of patriotic sentiment in town and we just need to wake it up. So again, if you're ever in the area, visiting the area, uh, make sure you stop in Acton, right next to Concord, sort of, not really off the beaten track, just a, an exit away off of Route 2. We, uh, in the uh, town hall, you could actually see the plow that Captain Isaac Davis had, and that was used as a model for the Minuteman statue there at, at the Concord Bridge.